Okay, so the previous talk, that was a, a, a difficult for, uh, act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was uh, amazing, but um, now it's time for um, another speaker, and I know I know her from the Angular community. We have met or crossed paths in few uh, conferences, and uh, she's she's really nice uh, to hang out, and um, yeah, <laughs> and she always makes these cute demos. I mean, you will see a lot of cute uh, animals going on. So give her, give her a round of applause, Jen Looper. That was incredible. I'm, you should have seen the speakers rushing to take photos of the slides from the last talk. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Um, it's just amazing. I'm so impressed. Um, now I have to think about my own talk. OK, we're going to talk about NativeScript. And we're going to talk about the new NativeScript um, uh, implementation for Vue.js. So the title of this talk is Creating an Engaging Mobile App with NativeScript in Vue. Now, I do have to just Pause for a second. Uh, I've been um, asked to do a couple of slides. Um, a little a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor is actually us. So, <laughs> uh, if you're at all interested in NativeScript training, uh, you might be interested in some uh, training that's happening on the 20th to 22nd of March in Rotterdam. So you can hop by our booth, check us out, say hi. We're friendly. Uh, so that's the progress booth. Um, and I also want to talk about a passion project of mine. Um, so I have launched a project called viewvixens.org. And um, I just want to talk about this for a second. It was interesting that a, yesterday um, there was a tweet that came across saying, you know, he'd, um, the conference goer had never seen such a long line out the men's room. And I'm thinking, oh, welcome to, welcome to programming conferences, my friend. <laughs> But this is not a good thing. I mean, lines are bad anyway. But what's really important is that we have just as long lines out the ladies' room okay, at these conferences. This is what I want to see. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so um, I've launched Vue Vixens. It, it's inspired by a project in the Angular community called NG Girls. I was going to call it Vue Girls, but none of us, not all of us are girls. And uh, <laughs> some of us have some mileage. And uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But NG Girls was patterned after Django Girls. So the Django community are the ones who started this. And the idea is that we have uh, workshops for women and those who identify as women. And then we have mentors coming in. And uh, they basically help people do a, uh, a workshop. And then over the day, you build an Angular or Django app. Well, we're going to do the same with Vue. So Vue Vixens has launched. We're going to be uh, having our first, we're going to have a sponsored breakfast at the upcoming Vue US conference. So this is an exciting thing for us. So we are kind of doing a soft launch there. But our big launch is going to be at the We Rise conference in Atlanta, Georgia. If you've never come to a conference in Atlanta, Georgia, I strongly recommend. It's absolutely amazing, unbelievable community of really fierce women developers. So um, yeah, 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 come to Atlanta and eat some fried chicken. The, the biscuits are just so light. They just float right off the plate. It's a, it's a treat for me. I'm in Boston. There's nothing to eat. So <laughs> Vue Vixens. <laughs> OK. Thank you. So this is kind of a talk with announcements and celebrations interspersed. So who am I? My name is Jen Looper, and I'm a senior developer advocate at Progress. You can check us out at the booth. And um, full disclosure, I'm an ex-French teacher, actually. My, I have like training for years and years to become a French professor. And uh, well, that kind of didn't work out. Long story short, here I am on stage talking about Vue. Um, <laughs> so um, you know, think life happens at you real fast. Um, I'm also the co-founder of the Wellesley Chinese Language School. And I just wanted you to keep in mind you know, um, that this is a talk um, that allowed me to build a product as an ex-French teacher and as someone who's passionate about um, second language acquisition and teaching foreign languages. Um, this is a talk that I, a product that I always wanted to launch and a talk that I always wanted to give. So thank you, Vue.js Amsterdam, for allowing me this privilege. What a treat. Oh, and by the way, it's Chinese New Year. It's the year of the dog. So this is my year. So it's going to be a great year. I can tell you it's going to be great. OK, so happy Chinese New Year. So let's talk about NativeScript. Um, mobile developers, make some noise. Woohoo, mobile developers. <laughs> All right. Well, um, because I had a feeling that might happen, I, I just threw a couple of slides in here to explain what NativeScript is. 
Uh, NativeScript is a framework for building native cross-platform mobile apps. And with this, since it is a native app, you're getting this no compromise, what we like to call it buttery smooth. In Boston, we say it's just like butter. It's just like butter, the animations uh, for iOS and Android. So you can download an app called um, Examples Native Script in both app stores and, and check it out. Um, a lot of people come up to me and say, Native Script, oi. Do I have to learn another script? Do I have to learn another language? No, it's just JavaScript. It's just JavaScript. If you know JavaScript, you know NativeScript. So you're going to use JavaScript, CSS, XML to construct the app. Um, and especially, NativeScript is a way to use either no framework or Angular or now Vue to construct your native mobile app. So Vue plus NativeScript is love. Now, why, as a mobile developer, might you be interested in adopting Vue? Well, uh, kind of like what Angular 2 did when Angular JS moved into Angular 2, Vue uh, 2.0's adoption of the virtual DOM enables native mobile rendering. So Angular 2 is kind of the same way. It decoupled the DOM. So now we have this um, ability to go ahead and, and you know, build for mobile on the front end and then reuse a certain amount of framework code. It also offers a great way for web developers to embrace mobile platforms via NativeScript or Weeks. Um, interested just to know who's, who's a Weeks developer in here? Hello. <laughs> oh, it's Tiago. <laughs> OK, never mind. <laughs> um, and Vue is beautifully lightweight. It's, it's supremely appropriate for mobile. This is a, this is a great plus. So NativeScript and Vue have great code sharing potential as well. You have a Vue app. You have an app built in Vue. You want a mobile app. You can reuse a certain amount of the code to build this beautiful uh, native mobile app. This is very, very exciting and special. Now, how does NativeScript work with Vue? Well, let's talk about it. So there are three basic differences. We're going to use a new plugin called NativeScript Vue. It's an NPM module, a plugin that basically allows your Vue code to interface with the NativeScript code. So it's sort of like um, an implementation of Vue that also accounts for NativeScript. Because when you're building on mobile, you have extra things that you need to worry about. You need to worry about things like that weird Android back button. Up in the action bar, you have other buttons that you need to handle navigation. All of these interesting things that mobile devices offer that are a little different from the web implementation. So you can't use a plain web implementation in your native mobile app. You need some kind of implementation to allow that bridge into to um, a project like NativeScript. So you're always going to import, instead of importing Vue from Vue, you're going to import Vue from NativeScript to Vue. So in the NativeScript app, you're just going to see that line at the top. Another difference is that you're bootstrapping the app somewhat differently. And you can see some differences here. Uh, we have um, this L element that we're going to attach and inject our HTML into. Well, in NativeScript, there's no DOM. We don't have to do any of this sort of injecting, so we don't worry about that. Sorry, switch the slide too quickly. And then the third basic difference comes in the templating, right? So. Here I have um, a web app that I created, and it's using Vuetify. So I'm using you know, the vCard, this kind of markup that you're kind of familiar with on, on the, if you're building for with using Vuetify, um, and H1s and all the standard HTML markup that you would use on the web. Um, but for NativeScript, we have a different markup. So we are using NativeScript modules. So here in my template, I use a stack layout. So that's going to allow my elements to stack um, on the screen. I use native labels, so just the label module here. And I could have buttons and this sort of thing, different kinds of layouts. So the markup is going to look different on your NativeScript mobile app. Product launch time. So I launched my very first NativeScript view app and mobile app together. So I want to just show you what it looks like. So when you're starting uh, to launch your product or to launch your project, uh, there are a couple of ways to try uh, to get started. And one way is using the, Nat the NativeScript Playground. So play.nativescript.org is a great place to start. Or you can just use the NativeScript CLI. Now, you know you're in the Nat NativeScript CLI because it's TNS, Telerik NativeScript. So you just TNS create my app CD into that folder, and then just do an NPM install uh, the NativeScript view module so that you can start using this in your app. So I wanted to do a little demo of the playground. Uh, and I encourage you, there, there's a couple of app installs that you're going to need to do. But I'm going to show you a QR code. And if you feel like uh, taking a look, uh, let's see. So I'm going to just close this a little bit. And let's hope the Wi-Fi is happening. 
Um, okay. So this is what the playground looks like. Ooh, Wi-Fi, fabulous. Okay. So what I would do at this point is grab a QR code, and I'm just going to um, broadcast my iPhone, if I can. So many devices, that's crazy. Sorry. All right, let me broadcast my iPhone. Come on, quick time. Okay, just to do a new movie. It's going to be my face. Don't be scared. Hello. All right. So what I would do is I would go to the playground. You can see? That's a gigantic iPhone. It's even bigger than this one. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> and I would grab the QR code, scan the QR code. You can still see. Okay. And this is the little view native script app that I created for you all. So if anybody wants to try, I can, here's the QR code if you want to try. There's a couple apps to download, so I don't know if you're going to be able to do it now. But this is, the, um, this is just done in uh, standard uh, markup. It looks like this. So you can kind of get an idea. All right. So that's a great way to get started. OK, so let's build something. So what I um, decided to build is this app that I always wanted to build. It's an app for language teachers, and it's called Elocute. Um, so there's uh, several plays on words going on. I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> so for um, elocution. And basically what it's doing is replacing the language lab. How many people have learned a second language, and you're in the language lab, and there's these dreadful earphones, and you're stuck in a, like a cube, and you're sitting here like talking awkwardly to the machine, and it's really freaky? <laughs> well, here you can talk awkwardly for, to your iPhone, because what you can do is use, use, your, um, use your iPhone, your, your mobile device with a mobile app, to replace the language lab. So here, language teachers are managing classrooms in the web app. They're assigning texts to students who, um, who are going to read aloud into their mobile phones to, get, um, to perfect their accents. Right? So you have a login screen here, and this is all Viewtify standard web app. You can actually visit it live at elocute.me. Uh, so you log in, and then you create your classrooms, assign your students to your classrooms, and then in your classroom area, you start creating texts. Um, yes, uh, I think some of you might know this little poem, so we're going to have some fun with it in a second. Um, so this is the teacher's job, and then the students would go ahead and have their mobile app, and they log in, <laughs> and they see that, okay, I, I'm enrolled in several different, uh, different classrooms, so French 1, French 2, Dutch 101, and then here's their assignment, and then this is what they have to do. So they have to press start, read the assignment, they have a speech-to-text plugin that's going to transcribe what they read, and I have a little algorithm in the back that's checking for accuracy. So this is what the app looks like. We'll give it a demo in a second. So building the web app, what did I use? I used the Vue CLI, I used Viewtify, I used the Firebase, plugin, uh, Firebase UI for authentication, uh, Vuex for state management, and the Firebase backend. And then to build the mobile app, I used the NativeScript CLI, uh, the Webpack template that is basically compiling, 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 and as, as you're making changes, and then LiveSync is, is uh, making changes on your phone as you, as you edit. The NativeScript View plugin that I've talked about. Vuex also on mobile for state management. And a lovely Firebase backend. I like Firebase. So let's talk about a little bit of differences of how your web app is going to look and how your mobile app is going to look. So I have some side-by-side -side pictures. I hope you can see them. Um, and it's showing a little bit of the differences. So again, on my mobile app, I import NativeScript View. And then I make a couple of little tweaks to the router. So um, in the web, I use mode history to get rid of those hash hashtags in the top, the hashes in the top. And on mobile, I use page routing. And this allows me to um, also use single file components, a um, little bit different uh, needs. And then it's kind of cool, in the meta uh, here, I use requires auth true. And I can use that on mobile as well for the pages that need to have authentication to log in. But I also have a little extra availability of meta um, uh, uh, objects that I can use here. So I, like for the first page, I want to hide my action bar for the, for the login. I don't want the action bar to show. So I just set hidden, hidden action bar to be true. And then everything else is the same. You're going to see a lot of similarities in the code between the web and the mobile um, apps. So here is uh, Vuex for web and mobile. It's literally the same thing. So that's really exciting. It's really great when you can just like write it, you know, and, and share. 
Firebase integration is a little bit different, and this is where we get into you know, mobile plugins. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting excited. <laughs> um, but basically on the web, you know, you're going to use standard Firebase um, uh, imports, and then on mobile, I need to use uh, the uh, NativeScript Firebase plugin. So it's using the native SDK, so a little bit different plugin that you need for Firebase. And then styling, this is kind of up to the choice of what what you're using, what tooling you're using. But I believe that, um, as I remember, it's Stylus on the web for Vuetify. And on mobile, I just use a, a theme and a little extra styles because I like to pretty colors and cute fonts. So that's the only difference. And then we get into the templating, and here's where you know the rubber meets the road. <laughs> so on the web, we're using all these Vuetify templates, uh, Vflex, Vlayout, Vflex, Vcard, Vavatar. And on mobile, I have you know, a stack layout and then a grid layout, label and an image. So here's where you really kind of are, are making differences. Uh, an action bar is here as well. Demo time. OK. I'm going to demo. I'm going to demo the mobile app. There's no laughing. <laughs> OK. So I'm a, um, gonna pretend that I am in my Dutch class. So I'm gonna pull up Elocute, my mobile app. Okay, and then we gotta wait for Firebase to come up. And yes. Okay, here's my Dutch 101 classroom. Here's my assignment. Okay, no laughing. <laughs> I don't know Dutch. <laughs> I do not know Dutch. <laughs> okay, here goes. Pusho mal, comments how. Ik heb lekker milk voor jou. In voor mij, rijst de brei. Oh, wat heerlijk smullen wij. <laughs> let's, get, let's get my score. 81. It's, it's the best one yet. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so happy. That's incredible. <laughs> it's a lot of practice. All right. <laughs> all righty, all righty. Um, OK, so back to the slides. Demo, demo. So what I, talk, what I want to talk about now is um, into the future. So, so far, I, I've basically been a little bit cheating. I said, OK, let's talk about code sharing. But I basically built the web app in, in Vuetify and deployed it separately. And then I built my mobile app. If you go to elocute.me, you're going to find that you're not even able to download the apps yet, because I haven't released them, because they're not quite ready for the app stores yet. They will be, though. Then I'm going to make millions. So <laughs> this is my problem. I always pick hobbies that are zero, zero, zero money. Um, <laughs> So, but into the future, real code sharing is coming. It's coming to this ecosystem. This is totally exciting. We have a template that you can use, and it has a beautifully clean design so that you can build for iOS, Android, and the web in one mono repo. So I created a little, um, a little sample app of types of seals. It's a little list, and then it just is sharing a certain amount of code um, so that I have the same on mobile. And it looks like this. So there are two files, entry.web.js and entry.native.js. And it has these differences you know, so that you know you're working in a NativeScript view app. So you bring in your, your proper plugin, and then you create your templating. You could probably strip down the mobile templating a little bit. I don't think you need that stack layout around that. But um, it's really, really similar. And then um, in the temp in the app dot view is where these kind of experiences come together because what you have are two templates. You have a template web and a template native. Isn't that cool? So it's really really simple. I just had a little seal gallery, um, and I just use those both in my different templates. So you can kind of fork the experience and then share in the script uh, the the name of the components. Really nice, like this. And then if you need to use single file components, SFCs, for web and mobile, it's kind of the same strategy. You have template web and template native in the same SFC. And then Webpack is going to do its magic. And it knows with the build scripts that you're going to set up, that are set up for you with this, re with this repo, you're going um, to be able to um, go ahead and deploy for web and for Android and for iOS. And it's a thing of beauty and a joy forever. And I'm so happy. <laughs> so. And I have one more thing to say. I have one more thing to say, and um, kind of like Steve Jobs. So I need to make an announcement, and I'm so proud and honored to welcome my colleague and friend, Igor Randielovich.
Hello, everyone. Who, <laughs> who is the core contributor of the NativeScript View plugin, and I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Jen. So um, it's an honor to be here. Um, I'm glad so many people came. And um, I have a big announcement to make. NativeScript View 1.0 is now released. So. So for the past, I think, two months, uh, we've been really hard at work to, to finish the documentation. And I, I believe the Getting Started Guide is pretty, pretty decent. So if you, ha if you want to dive into developing mobile applications with Vue, I, I'd really recommend you try NativeScript Vue. I think you're going to love it. And uh, you can learn more about NativeScript Vue on the website and in the GitHub re repo. And yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yay! High five. That's awesome. Thank you very much.